Now, before we get to the seating chart, I just wanted to remind you that the classifications, I have named seating chart, period, and computer, the three fields. This is for sorting your students. For I use it for taking role, keeping track of everybody. You can think of a name that suits your classroom and then two variables here that are going to, it's going to sort by this number right here. And then it's going to order the list by this number right here on your clipboard. So let me demonstrate. Let me show you how that works. When we get down to seating chart, this is where whatever names you pick up there are going to, to be populated here. And you might wonder, why 44? <laughs> well, it's because I have 44 computers in my room, so sorry about that. Um, you can subtract to your heart's content or add others. You can change all these names. But what this is good for is if I come out to edit my profile, here's what I have all students do. Their username, you notice they cannot be changed. I use a student's ID here. You can use whatever you want, but something that will help you identify who they are. Um, then the students fill in their real first name, whatever they want to be called is how I have them do it, their actual last name, and then your nickname. And here, I might as well get off of that. As soon as you type something, it goes into this list. And had I entered a first name and last name, it would also go into this list. But in the clipboard, without a first name and last name, there are holes there. You want the students identified by something other than this nickname, so you want them you encourage them, you require them to fill this out because this is your back-end tool. It's pulling the data from this page, the profile page. Their email address. We have a district email for the kids, so we use that in our room, but use whatever you want, their, their contact info. This is great, and then all my students have a website. When they fill this out, and this could be I don't know. It could be a Google site for you. It could be a Edmodo page, a blog, whatever EduBlog, whatever you use. For if you want to have them document their work online, and there is all kinds of research. If you don't have privacy issues with this, that says when students put their work online, they take greater ownership of it, and especially when they know others are looking at it. So this is one of those things I leverage. Um, I don't require or ask this to happen. Um, I do ask them to be able to remember their own password, um, but here we go. Period and computer. So let's say I'm in period one or whatever name you gave and I sit at, you know, computer 12. And if you're in multiple periods, you can add another period. And the remove here means that when I update the profile, it will disappear. If the student happens to change periods or seats, they just change this and update it and then update their profile. I'm going to go ahead and just so this, so you can see, without those names, that's bad. And I will put in that web address here for my website. So all of this makes sense. And we'll update this profile. And then when we go to the clipboard and select the appropriate period, I put myself in period one. Oh, I'm an admin. <laughs> we have this set up so admins do not display. So you don't have to trust me on this or download your own, or I can make some sample student accounts. This works. <laughs> and who's who's ever in period one it will list their computer number and by default it sorts by this this figure here when i do grades i click on the student's name so they're alphabetical and it displays them last name comma space first name so um, that allows the teacher to sort by last names really important really just such a valuable tool and sorry for not anticipating me not showing up here. Ah, the plight of being an admin. There you go. And that, heading back over here, 
um, is how you, how I use the seating chart. Maybe you'll find a use for it too. That but this is such a great way to take role, especially when you have over 40 students in the class. And um, I don't do direct instruction. I make videos, shockingly so, and I'm free up to help wander around the room, observe, and assess in a real organic way to see how the students are doing in a show-what-you-know environment.